Well, we're here today, 20th of April, in one of this year's beet fields. Normally at this stage of the year, I'd probably have two herbicides on beet. As you can see, we're not just there yet. Um, weather conditions have slowed everything down this year. There's probably never been more interest in how to bank a lot of fodder for a coming winter as there is at the moment, given the, the tail end of the fodder crisis we're currently in. This last year was in winter barley. The, the crop that still shows in it, crop of forage rape sown for the winter, was burnt off only about two weeks ago. So this is the crop that was sown. As you can see, we got some fairly big stems. That's down to the fact that my management plan for this beet would have started last the 24th of July, I think. I took a photograph from up there with the impending storm clouds coming that brought the, the tail end of good harvest weather. And this would have got uh, a lot of farmyard manure per acre last July. The nitrogen that has been captured by the forage rape, the P and the K, helped to grow the forage rape, but basically most of my nutrition went on last year for this year's beet crop. As you can see, it got slurry only two days ago. We had to get in an umbilical system because the ground wasn't fit for tankers. To be honest, that's only spread because it needed to be spread somewhere, and this is the last ground we had left to, to apply anything to. Possibly tonight, there'll be a plough in it. Um, if we get it to pl get it ploughed tonight, I'd like to think next Wednesday or Thursday we'll have it sown and we'll start the process again. Um, last year's beet crop, I can't take credit for it at all. It's, it's the year. The year worked out extremely well. All root crops did very, very well and we would have finished, you can see the last, literally the last ton on the concrete down there. I think um, de-stoned, washed over a weighbridge, we finished up at 39.7, 39.8 ton an acre. Way more than we ever got before. Some of it I would attribute to the way I'm growing it with nutrition, but also, as discussed last year, the particular herbicide programs we use. We always use um, original products. Um, we keep the rates right, use the right adjuvants, the adjuvants that are kinder to the beet crop as opposed to getting more of a burn. One change I may make for the coming year, I may split the main second spray into two halves rather than load on the chemistry. But I can tell you now, with no beet in this field, that what the programme will be a T1 of 30 grams of debut, a half a litre of Betanol Max Pro, a half a litre, 0.4 of a litre of Venzar, because the label has changed, 0.5 of a kilo of Galtix with 0.5 of a litre of methylated rape oil super rapise, 60% of all of those doses, five days later, 60% again, and the T2 will be the same as last year, 1.5 Max Pro, 1.5 Galtix, 0.4 of Venzar, and probably a litre, a litre and a half of oil. The, the programme remains the same each year once you know your weeds, timing is everything but picking the right herbicides that will go kindly on the beet to start and get maximum growth early and that's so important for the coming season and um, also a point to note some people would be nervous about sowing forage rape before a beet crop you have to have it burnt off the likes of that particular plant had very very little leaf when i sprayed it which is a concern but there should be enough glyphosate gone in and it'll be well buried with the plough that it shouldn't be a problem but if any of those were left on the surface and weren't burnt off there is no herbicide program and beet would be fit to take those out. So you have to burn off beforehand. There are people would like to have that clear from January, nothing on the ground. I'd like to have it burnt off earlier, but not clear because a growing plant is sucking moisture out of the ground and helping it to dry. So to me, the longer I have a crop on the, the ground, on the surface, the better. Another reason I like growing forage rape so much, and a lot of my land has had forage rape almost continuously for six to seven years. Not so much now that I've grown more winter corn. This is one of the best plants to tell you if you've got a pH problem. Because if you've got this in the ground and your pH is low, you're gonna get club root. The rape potentially won't even get going or it'll get going and when it's an inch or two tall, it'll die out. So this plant is a great little indicator of a pH problem, which when you're leading into beet, is a, is a fantastic step. But another little problem with the little bugger of a plant, as you can demonstrate here, slugs love them. It's a breeding ground for slugs quite often, and there's a little slug as it happens feeding off that stem of a forage rape. 